welcome back to yet another exciting week of the My Zone Online School. My name is Marisel Stofberg and today we have so many lessons lined up for you. I am so excited. But first, please remember to always sanitize our hands. And also remember that our theme for this week is to please stay at home. So please do not walk around unnecessarily. Let's keep each other and ourselves safe. So now let's jump right into our lessons for pre-primary and grade one, week five, lesson one. Explanation of symbols on worksheets are as follows. Use coloring crayons to color the picture. Use your finger to follow the track or line or show the correct picture. Use a coloring crayon to draw a line or write a number or sound. Look at the picture and say the number or sound out loud. Use a scissors to cut on the dotted line. Look at the picture. Use these symbols for the lesson of the day, which will be allocated at the top right side of each page. For example, lesson one, prepositions and directions. Welcome to my Zone Online School. My name is Lentina Huagus and I'm joined by my friend. This week's theme is going to be shapes. But before we start with our lesson, let's sanitize our hands. Well done, even at the back of your hands. Make sure your hands are nice and dry. And today's lesson will be shapes and the letter R. Today's lesson is going to be shapes. Can we please turn to page three? Well done. Hope all of you are at that page. What can you see? Yes, you can see the shapes. Can we count the shapes? How many shapes are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different shapes. And they are all 2D shapes. The reason why we say they are 2D shapes is because they are all flat. Okay, let's start with the first one in the corner, the red tangle. Yes, they have got four shapes, four corners. Yes, you are right. And they have got two short sides and two long sides. Wonderful. Can we now take our pencils and trace over the shape? Make sure you go over the dotted line. Well done. You done with that one. You can color in with your time. Let's do the second shape. Yes, let's look at it. Yes, it is called a triangle. It has got three sides and three corners. You can count with me. One, two, and three. Wonderful. Can you again take your pencil, sit up straight and trace over the triangle. Make sure you cover all three sides. Well done. Now you can do the other shapes 
all by yourself. I know you can do it. Let's turn to page five. Yes, if we are on page five, we can see a beautiful snake. And on this snake, there are shapes drawn to help us with a pattern. Yes, you are right. Can we look at the shapes with the pencils inside them? The square is green. You have to color the squares green. The triangles are going to be red. The circles are going to be yellow. Well done. Now that's going to help you as you complete the pattern of this snake. Yes, let's see the first three. That's a triangle in a circle in a square. Yes, now you repeat it. That's what it means. You're going to make a pattern with it. Yes, then you start again with a red triangle, yellow circle, and a green square. I hope you will enjoy this exercise and complete it with your time. Let's turn to page six. Well done. I can see you are all there. Are you seated up straight? We will do the similar exercise as page three, yes. So we're going to do a pattern again. So let's look at the first row. I can see that this square is going to be green and then the triangle will be red. The circle you have to color in yellow and the rectangle will be blue. Yes, keep it that way because that's going to help you to complete the whole exercise. I hope you will enjoy doing this by coloring in all the shapes on the rope. Well done. Let's turn to page seven. Here on page seven, we will gladly count all the shapes. Yes, I can see fishes. You are right, there are stars and a moon and a boat with a sail, but that's all made out of shapes. So now we're going to look carefully and I will choose one and do one with you and the rest of the exercise you will complete at home with mommy and daddy. I would love to do the stars. So we will count the stars. Let's do it together. One, two, three, four, five stars. So you will start there at the bottom and write your number on the line. Hope you will enjoy this exercise. Can we turn to page eight? Okay, let's look at this page very carefully. Are we seated up straight? Because we're going to be doing our writing. Yes, well done. This letter's name is R. And it makes the sound like r, 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 r. And I can see a beautiful flower to help us with the sound. Just listen to the first sound while I'm reading it. Rose. Rose. That you can color in later on when we are done with our writing. Well done. Can we come down to this? Teacher will help you now 
to learn how to write the letter. So please look very carefully while teacher is writing the letter on the blackboard. I will not really worry with the mommy letter, which is the big one. We're going to learn to write the baby. So this goes like this. You start at the top, you go down, and with the same line, we come up, and then we make a round and stop. You start at the top, go down, and come up and make a stop. Well done. Now we're going to ask our friend to come and help us to write the letter R on the blackboard. Thank you for coming. Can you start at the top? Thank you so much. That's a nice and straight line. Wonderful. Go out and round. Well done. Can you try another one? Start at the top. Good job. Well done and thank you so much for helping us. I hope you will complete the rest of the lesson exercise all by yourself at home. Well done. Hope you have enjoyed today's lesson like we did. But before we go, let's sanitize our hands. It is very important to sanitize our hands to get rid of all the germs. But before we leave the place, let's call our special friend Zozi to come say bye. Goodbye. What is social distancing? Hi everyone, I am Zoshi and I am back. It literally just means that you need to stay home all the time and keep away from crowded places. And remember to keep your distance from your friends too. Everybody stay safe. Yay! Till next time. Bye! Thank you so much, teacher Lentina, for that great lesson. We learned all about shapes and the letter R. So are you ready? Because now it's grade two and three, week five, lesson one. Welcome to my zone online school. My name is Teacher Precious and I'm with my friend here. Say hello. hello. The theme for this week is public transport. And before we start, we want to sanitize our hands. Let's sanitize our hands. We rub inside and outside then we spread out our hands so that we don't touch the person next to us and we also do it in front okay and always when we are going out remember to wear your mask in today's lesson we are going to talk about number patterns, doubling, halving, number names, and ordering. Let's turn to page three, where we are going to count in tens. And this work is for grade two, 
but grade threes, you can also follow for revision purposes. And before we start filling in the missing numbers, we want to count in tens, and I'll do it with my friend here. Let's start from 10 to 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Very good. Okay. Another easy way of remembering the missing numbers is to start by writing our numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 10. Then we just make a follow-up, adding zeros. You see here, we have 10, 20, 30, 40, until you reach 100. Now, we want to fill in the missing numbers from our booklet. And let's go to A. We have 10, then 20, and there's a missing number and we go to 40. To make it easy, we can, all, we can come here. We have the 10, we have the 20, and this number is missing. So it means this box, you fill in 30 and then 40. You can do the rest on your own. B, C, D, E, F, G, and H from your booklet. Let's now turn to page four, where we are going to fill in numbers to complete the patterns. This work is for grade threes. And in filling in numbers, there are some rules we need to follow. At number one, we have two, four, six, eight, then there is a box and 12. How do we know the numbers that they are adding from the first number to the next number? I'm going to show it on the board. We said there is a 2, there is a 4, we have 6, 8, we have a box, and a 12. Okay. First, we want to check the number between 2 and 4. How many numbers did they add? So we say 4 minus 2 to get the numbers which were added here. So if we say 4 minus 2 equals to 2. So it means they were adding 2. It's a pattern of 2s. So it's from 2 to 4 is plus 2. 4 to 6 is plus 2. 6 to 8 is plus 2. Then 8 to which number here? So we say 8 plus 2 because we are adding 2. What is 8 plus 2, my friend? 10. 10. Very good. So the missing number here is 10. Okay. I'll do number four with you from our booklet. We have 18, 15. We have a box. We have another box. Then there's a six and a three. If you look at these numbers, you can see that they are counting backwards, 
We must always take note of that grade threes. First, we want to check how many numbers they added from 18, uh, from 18 to 15 going backwards. So it's 18 minus 15. Okay. 18 minus 15 is 3. So going backwards means we are subtracting. So in this case, we are subtracting three numbers. Okay, let's rub. So 18 to 15 minus 3. Yeah, it's a 3. 18 minus 15 is 3. 15 to which number? We count backwards three times. 15, 16, sorry, 15, 14, 13, 12. Okay, so here is 12. We come here, minus three going backwards. So 12 minus three is nine. Okay, nine minus three, uh, six, then the last one is three. This is how we do our number patterns. We have a different concept at number seven from our booklet. Number seven from our booklet. Let's check. We have a nine. We have 13. We have a nine again. We have a box. We have nine. We have 13. Let me write it on the board. Nine, 13, nine, a box, nine, 13. Okay. In this case, we are just following a pattern. Nine, 13, nine, 13, nine, 13. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, let's now turn to page five, where we are going to talk about doubling. This is a grade two work again, but grade threes you can join in for your revision. Doubling means adding the number by itself. Let's say we have the number eight and we want to double it. It means eight plus eight. Then we have the number three. It means we must add three by itself and it will be three plus three. Then we have a zero. We also add it by itself. So it's zero plus zero. Then we go to the number five. Here we say five plus five. Now I'm going to show you the correct method of doubling grade twos. We have eight here, so we put our two circles. We put eight dots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We put again eight dots in this circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we put our plus here. Then we put our dots together. We count them. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
13, 14, 15, 16. So our answer is 16. We go to number three. We also put the two circles. Okay. We put three dots. One, two, three. We put three dots in this circle. One, two, three. Then we count them together. We put our equal sign. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then our answer is six. We move on to zero. We have our circle. We have our circle. But because the number is zero, it means there is nothing. So it's zero plus zero. It's an empty circle and an, an empty circle. So there's nothing and our answer is zero. Thank you so much. Now you can do the work in the booklet following this method. Let's now turn to page six where we are going to talk about halving. Halving means sharing things between two people. Let's say we want to share 12 sweets. We have our 12 sweets. Let me draw the sweets for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And we want to share the sweets between my two friends, Tom and Jerry. Okay. So this is what we are going to do. We give one to Tom, one to Jerry, 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 one to Tom, one to Jerry. So it means Tom will get six and Jerry will get six, six as well. And let me show you another method, the last one. We just draw a line. Now we want to share our, let's say, 14 sweets. We count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14. This line shows halving. So in this case, we have seven sweets this side and seven sweets the other side. So Tom will get seven sweets, Jerry will get seven sweets as well. That's all about halving grade twos. You can now turn to your booklet and do the remaining work. Thank you so much. Let's now turn to page seven, where we are going to talk about number names. This work is for grade threes. And uh, before we start matching, we want to know how to write these numbers in words. First, I wrote the numbers here from 
one, two, seven. You must know the correct spellings. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you need to practice and know the correct spellings. I also have numbers here from 10 to 100 in words. When you want to write them, you take, I want to give an example here. Let's say you want to write 35. You take your 30, because you know the spelling, you put it here. You take your 5 from this side, you put it here, grade 3. So the number 35 will be like this. And don't forget to put this line. It's very important. So in words, it will be 35. Okay. Let me give you an example of 100. Let's say we want to give an example of 143. So this is what we are going to do. I'll put my 100 back. I'll take my 1. I'll put it here. I'll take my 100. I'll put it here. Then I'll take my 40 and I'll put it here. Okay, let me remove this. Then I'll take my 3. So this will be your number. And don't forget to put the line. So this is 143. You put end. One hundred and forty-three. Now let's go to matching. I'm going to match with my friend here. Come quickly in front. Okay, you can move and stand there. Okay. Can you match the numbers? Six. Very good. 12. Well done. He did it well. So from your booklet, you can now finish the other work. Thank you so much, grade threes. Let's now turn to page eight where we are going to talk about capacity. And on this topic, we are going to order and compare different containers. I'll use different containers from the table where I am. I have a cup. I have my sanitizer. As you can see, the cup is bigger and the sanitizer is small. So when we are ordering them from big to small, the cup will be the first one followed by the sanitizer. Now there is work in your book with different containers. You can see a teapot, a cup, and some other different containers. You are going to arrange the different containers from big to small. And you indicate with numbers from one to six, which one is the biggest, followed by which container. 
This is what you are going to do on page eight, grade twos. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for today. And before we move on, let us sanitize our hands once again. Let's rub. And we stretch so that you don't touch the person next to you. And we also do it in front. Remember to social distance. And every time you go out, remember to wear your mask. Before we move on, let me call our friend Zoshi to say goodbye. What is social distancing? Hi everyone, I am Zoshi and I am back. It literally just means that you need to stay home all the time and keep away from crowded places. And remember to keep your distance from your friends too. Everybody stay safe. Yay! Till next time. Bye! teacher precious for being so precious so now grade four and five learners i hope you are as ready as i am for week five lesson five english hello namibia Hello, grade fours and fives. Welcome to my zone online school. My name is teacher Kennedy. With me here is Chanel. Yes. Uh, before we start our lessons, let's remember to sanitize. Let's sanitize Chanel. Let's spray, spray in our hands, rub between fingers and behind yes and and let's not forget to keep the distance at least 1.5 will be good for us thank you very much our today's lesson is noun plurals we are going to talk about nouns and how to pluralize them Okay, boys and girls, like what I've said, we are talking about plurals. And here on page three, let's turn our books on page three, where we are talking about the rules that we need to follow, the rules that we need to remember when we are making or writing plurals of nouns. We are mainly focusing on the addition of S or ES. Now, what are plurals? Plurals means many or a lot of things, a lot of nouns. Nouns are in singular, meaning to say is one. When I say saying it's in singular form, we mean it's one. When we are saying it's in plural form, it means there are many. So, there are rules to be followed. When words are changed from single to plural form, there are some rules. We must remember this. I want to repeat it. Rule number one, rule number one. Most words simply take the S in their plural forms. Most of them, if you look, they take an S. 
For example, one house. One house is. One house, you cannot say one house is. But if there are men, you say two or more houses, right? One chair, two chairs. If you look closely at these nouns, when they are pluralized, they are just added an S. Rule number two, if the word ends in CH, SH, double S or SS, OS, or X, then we add ES. This is simple. Words ending with CH, SH, SS, S, or X. We just add ES in their plural form. Let's look at the examples. Church. If you look at this noun, it's ending with CH. Church. When there are many churches there, there is ES added to the noun church. One box, box is ending with X. We add ES for it to become boxes. Rule number three, rule number three. If the word ends in a vowel plus Y, meaning to say a vowel precedes a Y or comes before a Y, then we add the S in their plural form. Let's look at the examples. Holiday. The word holiday or the noun holiday is ending with A plus a Y. So there, what do we do? We just add an S. One key, two keys. We are just ending, adding an S. Let's go to rule number four, still on page three. If the word ends in an O, then we add ES in their plural form. For example, potato is ending in an O. We add ES there. Two potatoes, two tomatoes, a hero, two heroes. We are adding ES there. I hope we are following. Let's go to rule number five. Rule number five. Some words ending in an O take an S in their plural form. For example, photo, it becomes photos. We're just adding an S there. One radio, two radios. Rule number six, rule number six. If a word ends in double O, we add an S in their plural form. Double O, we are just ending, adding an S in their plural form. For example, zoo, zoo. Two zoos. One igloo. Many igloos. These nouns are ending with double O. Then we are just adding S as the plural. There's one thing that I want you to understand, boys and girls. Not all nouns are added ES or S. There are also irregular plurals that do not follow these rules at all. Example, we've got nouns like tooth, tooth, 
one tooth. If there are many, we don't add S or ES. They become teeth. Tooth, teeth. One many, 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 with an E. One foot, many feet. Foot, feet. These are irregular nouns. They may maintain the same word or they change completely. One child, two children. One child, two children. Thank you so very much, boys and girls. I understand you are following the rules for changing nouns to their plural form. <laughs>
So fill in for child, foot, sheep, fish, mouse. Okay, boys and girls, let's turn our books to page eight, where we are having an interesting comprehension. An interesting comprehension that is full of plurals. Nouns in their plural form and in their singular form. Remember what I told you last time that for me to understand a comprehension passage, I start by going through the questions. So let's go to our questions. Number one is saying, what? Why did the mice have to run away? Name three things that the mice had to eat where they used to stay. What were the only things they could find to eat in the field? Under which two places did they search for food? Where did they sleep? How did they, the, the lilies keep the water? What are the names of the two brothers who found better food for them? Where were the nuts found? What did they find with the strawberries? Write down 10 plural form nouns from the passage. Like what I've said, this passage is full of nouns in their plural form. I'm going to read in your hearing. The mouse family. Once upon a time, there was a family of mice who found themselves lost after they had to run away from a few hungry stray cats. They used to have lots of food where they lived. They had seeds, herbs, different cheeses, sweets, and fruit. Now, they only had dry pills and old pods from a field, which was difficult to chew with their little teeth. They searched for food under the tree, the, the tree trunks and rocks. They slept in a feather bed they made from feathers that they gathered from under the trees. They drank water from the lilies that had dew inside them early in the mornings. Charlie and Mick went searching for better food and found a bunch of nuts in the garden in bowels on the tables. They took some home and shared with their brothers and sisters. Soon they found cakes and strawberries and shared these amongst all of them. Some days they were lucky to carry some dried fruit chips from the kitchen. They lived so well in the house that they decided to stay. So. They lived happily over, ever after. What an interesting story. Full of plurals, nouns in their plural forms. Hence we are asked this question. Write down 10 plural form nouns from the passage. I, uh, I want to believe that we have all understood this important lesson about plurals and the rules to be followed when we are changing from singular form to plural form. And remember that singular means one, plural, many. Thank you so very much, boys and girls. Okay. Boys and girls, it has been good to be with you. But before we go, let's remember to sanitize 
So now let's sanitize to make sure our hands are safe. We've been touching the surfaces, the, the desks. And let's remember also to maintain our distance. It's good for us. Let's meet in the next lesson. Goodbye for now. What is social distancing? Hi everyone, I am Zoshi and I am back. It literally just means that you need to stay home all the time and keep away from crowded places. And remember to keep your distance from your friends too. Everybody stay safe. Yay! Till next time. Bye! Thank you so much, Teacher Kennedy. What a wonderful lesson. We learned all about nouns and plurals. So now grade six and sevens, we didn't forget about you. So please be ready for week five, lesson five, English. My name is Oswald Ndoda. With me here is Pomono. Uh, let us greet him. Right, before we go into today's lesson, let's begin by sanitizing our hands like that, inside and outside, and then in between our fingers, we stretch out our hands to maintain the social distance and always we should have our masks on. Right, today's lesson is going to be on diminutive nouns. Right, boys and girls, remember we looked at common nouns, we also looked at abstract nouns, proper nouns. Now we want to move on with these nouns. Like I said, today's lesson will be on diminutive nouns. Diminutive, let's pronounce that word properly. Right, what are diminutive nouns? Diminutives are words that refer to something smaller or younger. This is on page, uh, sorry, this is on page three. It's on page three of your booklet. Right, diminutive nouns are words that refer to something smaller or something which is younger. Remember about young ones of, of different animals and then we have also small things. For instance, a river, Okavango River, a small Okavango is called a rivulet. And then a young one of a dog is a cub, sorry, a puppy. And then we also have a young one of a, a Kate is a kitten, right, diminutives are made by adding a suffix, E-T, L-E-T, L-I-N-G, O-C-K, E-double-T-E, and K-I-N, to the root word. Now, we are saying these, uh, these suffix are added to root words, E-G, a root word like eagle, if you add L-E-T, it becomes eaglet. So eaglet is the young one of an eagle. You have owl, 
a young one of an owl becomes an owlet. Duck, duckling, bull, bullock. Kitchen, kitchenette, hill, hillock. Diminutives can also be a special word for something younger or smaller, e.g. Tree, we call it a sapling. A, a, a small tree is called a sapling. Right, let's proceed. Below there on the same page, we have a list of diminutives to refer to. We want to use this as our dictionary as we do our activities. Each time, we will be turning to page three and look for the answers. There are quite a number of nouns and their diminutives. For instance, there's beer, cub, goose, goosling, and then we also have um, the last ones, which is goat, kid, stallion, colt, crown, coronet, etc. Let's turn to page four. Right, on page four, diminutive words with the suffix et and the suffix let, l-e-t. An example there for novel is novelette. Kitchen, kitchenette. Towel, towelette. Cigar, cigarette. And then on the other side, we have pig, piglet, book, booklet, leaf, leaflet, and lastly, droplet. Right, boys and girls, let us turn to page four of our booklet. We want to look at activities. Number one, Select the correct word from the box to complete the sentences. Now the words in the box read as signet, eaglet, fawn, sapling, streamlet, kid, lamp, calf, islet, duckling, cub, fall, rivulet, and gosling. Now, what you simply need to do is to choose a word that will complete the given uh, um, phrases there. For example, a, a young duck is a duckling. A young goat is a kid. So you proceed from C up to N, writing the correct uh, uh, diminutive for each. And then exercise, uh, I mean activity two on the same page, it says add the correct suffix to make the diminutive explain the meaning of each diminutive. For instance, we have heel. Do we say Hillock or hillet? The answer should be hillock. That's a small hill. Then book. Do we say bookling or booklet? The answer should be booklet, meaning a small book. So you continue with the remaining um, activities. Now, activity three. That is on page five. Let's turn to page five. Activity three, it says, read this passage. And obviously, at the end of the passage, there are some questions to be answered. Now, let me read for you the passage first. While bending down to drink water from a rivulet one day, a fox and a cub fell in. Try as they would, 
they could not climb out because the walls of the rivulet were too high. All the tadpoles and fry along the bank were shocked at the arrival of the new inhabitants and swam away. Not long afterwards, a goat and her kid came along. Behind them were, lamp, were two lamps and a piglet, rushing to get the first sip of water. Seeing the fox and its cub in the water, the goat asked them why they were in the water. We are enjoying the cool, pure water, replied the fox. Would you like to jump in and taste it? Without stopping to think, the foolish goat jumped in, followed by the others. No sooner had he reached the bottom than the cunning old fox leaped onto his back and scrambled onto the bank with a cup in her, in her mouth. Looking down at the unhappy goat, the fox laughed and said, Next time, friend, be sure to look before you leap. Sadly, the goat, the kid, two lamps, and the piglet drowned. First to notice the free meal was an elver, followed by tadpoles, fry, and terrapin hatchlings. They all had a good meal. Right, boys and girls, that's how we should read. Then we turn to page, um, page six of the booklet where we have the questions. You answer those questions from A to D. For instance, the first one would tell you, underline the diminutive nouns in the text. So if you go back to the passage on page five, as you read through, you would see quite a number of diminutive days, diminutives in there. Then you underline. Yours is simply to underline the diminutives. And then B says, write these words in the diminutive noun column below. Use each diminutive only once. Right. So I would like you to do that exercise and before that uh, okay that's fine right welcome back boys and girls let's go to page six of our booklet it says our uh, activity four says complete the following using diminutives, a small hill is called a hillock. A condensed book is called a booklet. Now, C to G, you can complete that on your own. Let's quickly move on to activity five, which says use the diminutive suffixes to form diminutive nouns. The diminutive suffix E T T E and then gives us, I mean from the noun statue, we have statuette. So we can do the rest on our own. Let's quickly turn to page um, seven, activity six. Draw a line from the diminutive to the correct definition of it. On your left hand, we have diminutives, and on your right hand, you have the definitions. So I begin with A. Definition A says a small river, a small, uh, sorry, a very small river. You go to 
or your left side, if you look at number 12, it says rivulet. A very small river is a rivulet. So you join a, a very small river and rivulet. That's A and 12. Also, a young, a young goose, that's on B, a young goose becomes a gooseling. So you join number one and B. Now, let us do the rest on our own. But before that, let's proceed to activity seven, which reads, change the underlined words to diminutives and rewrite the sentences. The lady found the dog in a river and took it home to dry off in her kitchen. The underlined diminutive nouns there are dog, river, and kitchen. So, if we are to rewrite that, the sentence would read as follows. The lady found the party in a rivulet and took it home to dry off in her kitchenette. So we can move on to B and do the rest. Now, on our page um, eight of our booklet, there is a crossword puzzle there. There is a crossword puzzle where we have um, a word being on our right, right bottom, or bottom right, there, there is a, a list of words there, which are diminutives, and then on our right, where it says across and down, those are the nouns, where we should write the, the diminutives. For example, number one, going downwards, it says pig. So you go to number one, you find the diminutive of a pig, the young one of a pig. That should be a piglet. So if you write from number one going downwards, piglet should fit in those boxes. Across, that's number two, we have got, now, the diminutive or the young one of a goat is a kid. Those are three letters. They should also fit across there. So you continue from number one, two, up to the last one, which is number 20, writing the, um, the diminutives. Right, boys and girls, thank you very much for listening. Uh, we have come a long way doing these nouns. Uh, like I said, we did proper nouns, we did abstract nouns. Today we're looking at diminutives. Please, let's not forget them. Right, but before I go, always remember to sanitize. You squeeze your hands inside like that, outside in between the fingers. Stretch out, at least to ensure a meter apart, and then you put on your mask. Thank you very much, boys and girls. We will meet in the next lesson. Bye-bye. What is social distancing? Hi, everyone. I am Zoshi, and I am back. It literally just means that you need to stay home all the time and keep away from crowded places. And remember to keep your distance from your friends too. Everybody stay safe. Yay! Till next time. Bye!
Thank you so much, teacher Oswald, for teaching us all about diminutive nouns. So now, before I say goodbye, we will be checking in with our regions, and today we're visiting in the Ohangwena region, where we're speaking to one of the inspectors, Mr. Andreas Amomu, about how things are working with the delivery of the educational booklets in their region. We will also be watching an interview done by my friend, Elizabeth Joseph, with one of our superstar teachers. But that's it from me. Please stay safe, stay at home, sanitize, and please remember everything will be okay. Bye. My name is Andrea Samomo, Inspector of Education on a circuit. Just want to comment on the distribution of the e-learning materials which are being distributed by the NMH. Yeah, the material normally it arrived or we receive it as per the schedule. We do not have a problem. They came as it has been scheduled and uh, we try to do the check and the balance. The problem maybe we foresee it is only that they are not enough. They are a bit, uh, most of the school did not get. Therefore, since they are coming week one, week two and week three, what we normally do, the schools which receive the week one materials, and then the next consignment we are going to give the week two to the other one which did not get otherwise the delivery and uh, on time everything is perfect Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Joseph and we are in studio again and I'm joined by a lovely, lovely gentleman to my left, but I'm not going to introduce him, he's going to introduce himself, but before we get into it, allow us to please sanitize our hands, make sure you also sanitize your hands and um, keep a mask on deck. So, um, sir, welcome, thank you for joining us, who are you? Introduce yourself to us. Um, yeah, uh, I thank you that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I'm Gideon Ufuse, representing Baumkars Brown Primary School outside of Wintuk. 25 kilometers mm -hmm. outside of Wintook. Okay, right. that's it. Um, what, did, what has it been like for you here and what have you been doing uh, specifically here at NMH? Oh yeah, uh, when I came first day, mm -hmm. I was so angry. Mm -hmm. I was, I, I don't know, mm -hmm. but I was so angry. I feel so lonely. Mm -hmm. But when I came the second day, mm -hmm. I started relaxing. Mm -hmm. So we came here just to translate the booklets mm -hmm. of this pandemic pump, pump mm -hmm. time just to translate for the kids from English from, to from English to quick quick go back oh, okay as they said mm -hmm. KKG so I want you guys just to relax those booklets mm -hmm. some words will be difficult mm -hmm. but your mother your father your brother your sister your uncle is there to ask mm. All right. Um, and so do you have any last words of maybe encouragement or words of wisdom for your students that might be watching? Hey, guys, hala, wherever you are, just enjoy. Mm -hmm. Read. Learn. Don't stay. Just play around. Mm. Learn hard. So we will meet anytime. Mm -hmm. Hey, hala, relax and learn, as I said. All right. Come on. There you Don't smile like that. <laughs> I know you are smiling. Okay, but enjoy. <laughs> there you have it, guys. The energy is high here. Thank you so much for, for joining me, sir. And thank you also, Vio, for keeping it locked on MyZone's Facebook page. Um, remember to take in as much as you can um, during this time. We know that you cannot go to school right now, but uh, do study and do make sure that you, you keep yourself um, on the right check so that the moment you go back to school, you are not left behind. Um, it was uh, a pleasure for me to be in studio today with you, sir. Thank you so much for being here. So take care of yourself and keep sanitized. Uh, From us here, it's uh, uh, hala, hala, Just enjoy <laughs> and learn hard. Don't go play around. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much.